If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I share content on health, wellness, and beauty. While you're at it, go over to my Instagram. I created a new Instagram page. On that Instagram, I share content on health, wellness, and beauty as well, but that is content that I don't share here on YouTube. So if you're interested in any of the content that I have here, head over to my Instagram. Go ahead, like a picture, follow, go and show some love over there, y'all. Today's video, I wanted to share with you guys some food swaps to make when you're dealing with Crohn's or chloritis inflammation. If you don't know already, I have a history of Crohn's disease um, and I've dealt with it for a long period of time. And I made a ton of adjustments to my diet. These swaps have made a huge difference in my inflammation and just dealing with the disease as a whole. At the time, every gastrologist that I visited, every doctor's appointment that I've had where I wasn't in remission, I was always told, you know, low residue diet don't eat this you can have that but you can't have this and it was always a list of things that it just seemed like damn i can't eat anything because if i eat anything i'm gonna have pain i'm gonna have constipation i'm just going to have a miserable quality of life and at the time i wish i had someone that could just point me in the right direction so that's what i want to help you guys do if you would like more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up and I'm just gonna hop right into it. The first food swap that I made is eating porridge or like hot porridge instead of breakfast cereals. So that could be oat porridge, that could be cream of wheat. A lot of gastrologists tell you that having fiber isn't good when you're having a flare up or you're having inflammation when it comes to Crohn's and colitis. And even though oatmeal does have a bit of fiber, it is considered a meal that you could eat that is included in your low residue diet. Oatmeal is always a good swap because there's nothing added. It's just plain oatmeal and everything that you add into it, you're doing it yourself. It's not like cereal that's filled with sugar, um, filled with processed things, filled with chemicals that help it preserve its shelf life has less cholesterol, less sugar, less fat, and it keeps you fuller for longer. Oatmeal is also going to, because it's liquid and because it's hot, it is also going to coat the lining of your stomach, so it is something good to have for breakfast. Oatmeal is so ideal for treating inflammatory conditions, whether that inflammation is in your gut or any other part of your body because it is filled with vitamins and minerals. One of the main vitamins and minerals that is in, in oatmeal is manganese, manganese, manganese. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but manganese, I'll spell it up here somewhere. Um, but it, manganese helps swelling and inflammation as opposed to cereal that is just processed, filled with fat, sugar, and things that you just don't want inside your body. The next food swap that I've made and that has helped me so much is having healthy fats as opposed to vegetable oil. You want to have healthy fats like coconut oil, avocado oil, grapeseed oil, um, olive oil, ghee, vegetable oils like canola oil or like mixed vegetable oils contain poly and moly saturated fatty acids which when those acids are heated up can cause inflammation in your digestive tract. And I found that when I made that swap from using vegetable oil, canola oil, to using avocado, rapeseed, coconut oil, ghee, I found such a reduction in just pain itself after I ate a meal. Um, it, it just made a wonder of difference in how I felt after I ate. I don't cook with a lot of oils and olive oil is one oil that I don't really heat up. But I guess I can save that for another video. If you do have to use oil in your food or in your cooking, choose a healthy oil. Nut or oat milk instead of cow's milk. So y'all, if you have IBS, 
if you have Crohn's, if you have pleuritis, cow's milk, lactose is something that you should stay away from, whether you're lactose intolerant or not. Cow's milk slash dairy can be so irritating to your digestive tract. Factory cows are fed tons of antibiotics and tons of grains that just aren't a part of their natural diet and that seeps into the milk that they create that they end up giving us to drink and eat. These chemicals, these antibiotics, these grains that seep into the cow's milk cause irritation and cause inflammation in the gut lining. Y'all, do y'all research, do your study. I've read a few articles over my time of dealing with this where cow's milk actually causes irritation and inflammation in, and in the gut lining and is linked to certain conditions, including conditions on your skin like eczema or acne. If you're not allergic to nuts or oats or anything like that, I would make the transition of having nut milks or oat milk, like almond milk, cashew milk, hazelnut milk, hazelnut and cashew milk mixed together. These are milks that you can make at home. If you're able to make it at home and limit how much sugar you put in, that would be your best bet. But they do sell some good quality nut milks at the grocery store that you can pick up. This one, y'all, is a big one, okay? Having clean, whole foods instead of processed foods. Stop eating foods that are processed. I know it's tempting because it's like sometimes you feel really good, you're not having any issues, so you eat whatever you want because it's not causing any pain or discomfort or anything like that. So you just end up just eating what you've been desiring for so long because you stopped eating certain things. But just please stop eating processed foods. And by processed foods, I mean foods like flavored potato chips, fried chicken, um, mashed potato in a box, macaroni and cheese in a box. Processed foods contain way more than your recommended daily intake of fats, sugars, um, calorie and processed foods has large amounts of salt and chemicals and just unpronounceable names like you shouldn't be eating anything that you look on the back of the box on the ingredients and you can't pronounce the name you should put it right back on the shelf and instead just eat clean foods that fit into your diet because everyone's different everyone's not gonna have the same um the same response to certain things. There's certain things that I'm able to eat. I have a friend that has Crohn's disease as well that she can't eat at all and vice versa. Eat whole foods that fit into your diet and cook as much as you can at home. Don't eat on the street. Minimize how much you eat in restaurants. I know, well, it's not difficult now with the Rona, but minimize how much you eat in restaurants. If you switch up the menu, at a restaurant do that eating clean and eating whole foods you're in charge of the ingredients you put in you're in charge of how much salt you put in uh, how much sugar you put in you're in charge of literally everything you should be eating whole foods like vegetables meats seafood herbs garlic organic eggs certain grains avocado bananas the list goes on and on and also that that list could change depending on what's irritating to you. Those are things that I could eat that doesn't cause any irritation or any inflammation in my body. Just please stay away from processed foods and fast foods as much as you can. Like making that simple switch is going to be a life changer for you. This one is another big one. Switch out refined sugars for, for natural sugar like honey or maple syrup. So from my years of dealing with this disease, I found that sugar is just the worst. I have limited my sugar so much. Like I found that when I intake a lot of sugar, I start to feel a little bit off. Sugar could change the balance of the bacteria in your gut. That's why it's always good to take a probiotic, but that's a different video. 
having a, a imbalance of the bacteria in your gut can aggravate your symptoms depending on the type of symptoms that you have. Eating processed sugars raises the insulin in your body and that rise of insulin actually puts your gut in a stressful situation because it's working overtime to try to process what you just consumed. It could actually be more aggravating and could cause more inflammation and spark your flare even more. And I found that sugar just triggers my inflammatory response. So I just stay away from sugar as much as I can. If I do have to use sugar, I personally made the switch to a natural sugar like maple syrup or honey. I also do use raw brown sugar, which isn't that great either. But if you do have to use sugar, instead of using the refined white sugar, find a raw brown sugar that is organic and good. There's a bunch of other natural sweeteners, like monk fruit for another example. Just make that swap as opposed to refined sugar and you will feel a world of a difference whenever you do consume any type of sweet. And lastly, I just wanted to touch on a few foods that I think someone dealing with IBS, Crohn's, colitis should be cautious of because it can cause irritation and be hard to digest. One of them are starchy roots. Starchy root vegetables like tunips, carrots, artichoke. Those starchy vegetables, depending on your symptoms again, because everyone is different, those foods can be difficult for you to digest. Vegetables high in fiber. All gastrologists say limit your fiber, limit your fiber, and that could be difficult. Limiting your fiber just all depends on what's irritating to your symptoms. Me, for example, I could have, I eat kale, I eat spinach, I eat carrots, but I can't have collard greens, I can't have broccoli. Like, those things are things that are irritating to me. Tough meats like steak or lamb, like those things are things that take a while to digest. You wanna limit how much you're making your gut work to break things down because that will lessen the aggravation to the symptoms that you have. Sticking to meats like chicken or turkey, seafood, things that are easier for you to digest. If you would want to eliminate meat altogether, that's something that's good as well. Everyone's different, every symptom is different, and it's just literally, this is the most sensitive disease, I think, because it's you literally have to eliminate foods and then slowly incorporate foods back into your diet so that you know what's aggravating to you or not. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I really hope this helped in some way, shape, or form. If you like more videos like this, give this video a thumbs up. As of right now, I am in remission. Uh, I'm not on any medication. I haven't been on any medication for the past five years. I've just been being very cautious of my diet and the supplements that I take. If you would like me to share that with you, I definitely can. If you made it this far, go ahead and subscribe. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching.